Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's cook video, I've got an especially delicious recipe for y'all. And that is in honor of Mexican Independence Day and also I think it's Hispanic Heritage Month, so I don't know, we can throw that in there. But we decided to do like a Mexican theme night. Me and my pops did a combination thing where he made tacos and I made trout nachos. So these are some serious nachos. And for those of you who are big fans of the channel, stick around to the end because I've got some pretty cool announcements that I want to share with y'all. Alrighty boys, welcome to the kitchen. Now to start off the recipe, we went ahead and made some homemade guacamole. Right here, my pops has got the mocajete and he's crowning up like three avocados. All of the ingredients are gonna be listed down in the description, so if you wanna follow along or try this recipe yourself, go down there. This was a combo deal, so I don't really have everything being cooked on camera. Some of the stuff was made by my pop, some of the stuff was made by me. After you've got your avocados mashed up in your mocajete or a bowl, whatever you're using, go ahead and add about a quarter of a sweet onion, diced really fine. If you leave them in big chunks, you're gonna get a lot of onion and just a crunchy flavor to your guac. If that's something you like, go ahead and do it. But here at the household, we decided to go with a fine dice. We've got some cilantro in there and also a serrano pepper to add a little bit of heat. You can honestly put in whatever you like, but I found that this recipe right here for the guac was delicious. So moving on, if you really wanna be extra like me, we have this oil hanging around that I wanted to use one more time before I threw it out. So we went ahead and made our own homemade corn tortilla chips. Now, it was a special day because they had Mi Tienda over at our local HEB, which is kind of like the Hispanic version of HEB, and they sell, um, you know, a little bit more authentic uh, Mexican Hispanic foods. And they had some uncooked corn masa tortillas that uh, we were able to buy fresh and fry up ourselves. It was a special find, and I was really happy we got it because it made for a great chip. But basically, if you've got, you know, regular corn tortillas or you just get your own bag of chips, whatever floats your boat, uh, but I will say, if you take the time to home make your chips, they come out a lot better. Now, once you got your corn tortillas, you wanna cut them into quarters, little chip sized pieces, and get them ready to go into your oil, a big old pot, heat it up to about 400 to 425 degrees. I dumped them in there and they fried up in about, you know, no longer than a minute and a half. I didn't really time everything, I just kinda stood there and watched it. But if you're not available, just make sure you're back within one minute because those things do fry up quick. I'm not sure if there's a trick to getting all the tortilla chips to stay flat. Some of them really inflated big like balloons or sopapillas and um, you know I couldn't find any way to kind of deflate them while they're frying in the oil. It doesn't happen to all the chips but just some of them so I just went ahead and ate a couple of them while I was cooking. It was a nice little treat. Once you're done with all your chips I put them in a bowl and at this point you kind of want to move fast or your tortilla chips will be a little saturated with oil. Um, the ones at the bottom of the bowl where all that oil collects are just gonna get all greasy. So move fast, get over to some salt, pour it in your bowl, and then toss your chips in that salt. And while that oil's hot, it really helps to apply the salt evenly and just infuse that flavor. Or for any chips you're not gonna be using for nachos, you can move them to a drying rack where they can let that oil drip off of them instead of collecting at the bottom of the bowl. Now with your chips out of the way, we're gonna move on to our refried beans. The thing about refried beans is you got to have normal beans first. So I would recommend starting a pot of beans about three to four hours before going in to cook. And once those beans are ready, then you can get ready to uh, refry them. Now in our pot of beans, what we do is we'll simmer them in water and then we add a bunch of bacon to that water. No salt, no seasoning. We just throw the bacon in, that saltiness from the pork itself. Uh, we'll flavor those beans and the fat inside of that pork is really important for the next step in the refrying process. Now that our beans are ready, we can go ahead and start the refrying process. So what I like to do with my beans is kind of give it a canned bean texture. I find that the pasty style is a lot easier to spread out onto each individual nacho. Um, it just moves quicker. It's almost like a, a spread, a bean spread. Now, in order to accomplish that, we're gonna take our beans right here, a couple spoons, and we're gonna dump that into a blender. It's very important that you have some pork or uh, some sort of fat inside of your bean water because that's gonna help to emulsify that into a nice thick pasty cream inside of the blender. If you don't have any fat, I would suggest maybe tossing in a pat of butter with this before you blend and it'll really help to bring everything together. 
But if you used bacon while you were boiling your beans and letting them simmer up and cook, then you can just take a couple spoonfuls of that water. It's gonna be full of that rendered out pork fat and it's gonna make great for emulsification inside of your blender. Now go ahead and hit your beans with a quick couple pulses in that blender. Just let them come together, shake them around, let them come together, shake them around. Um, in my blender, the motor is not very strong, so once those beans thickened up, I really had to shake them to kind of keep everything moving. Took a couple pulses, but eventually you will get the texture that you want. This right here is perfect for me for what I wanna do with these nachos. Now, at this point, I forgot to record, but it is very, very, very important to me personally that each nacho gets the same amount of love. I hate when I'm at a place and I order some nachos, and then at the very end, you get that one chip that just got nothing on it, it's just a plain chip, and it's almost just disappointing. It's disappointing to eat, and it's just sad. So make sure, as a chef, that you show each nacho some love. I took and put a spoonful of beans on each individual chip. Uh, it can take some time, but trust me, it'll be worth it in the end, each nacho is gonna pack a real punch. It's gonna be like a, a, you know, a little meal on a chip. After that, we shredded up two different types of cheeses. I've got a fresh block of Monterey right here, and then another block of Munster cheese. Both of these cheeses will melt nicely under the broiler, and it'll just make for that good classic melted cheese nacho effect that you get at like a Mexican restaurant. Next up, you wanna take your nachos and pop them under the broiler. That's gonna help to melt that cheese really quickly. I know for me, putting all these together took some time, so there wasn't enough heat left in the chips and the beans to melt the cheese itself. Popping them under the broiler is really gonna help to get that nice melted cheese effect. For our trout, all we did was hit it with a little bit of chupacabra seasoning and then fried them up, sauteed it in a nice hot skillet with a little bit of butter and olive oil. Once those guys were cooked through and our nachos were out of the oven, um, you just wanna let the fish cool a little bit. And the idea here was to kind of mimic the chicken fajita, beef fajita nacho style that you would get at any Mexican restaurant. I'm sure you guys have a great idea of you know how big those chicken chunks are on each chip. So with your fish, just try and break them into similar size that you would get on a fajita nacho. It just helps to kind of savor the taste and texture of that fish. And really, um, you know, if you break it up too small, it can almost get lost in the nachos, it gets lost in the sauce, if you know what I'm saying. And finally, the nachos are ready to plate. We hit it with a little bit of Mexican sour cream, some fresh guac, and now it's time to eat. All right, boys, and we are finally done cooking. There we have it, the nacho plate. Look, I'm not a king of plating. Y'all have seen the other cook videos. I just wanna eat, man. So these look really delicious. I'm excited. Everything is homemade, everything. Look, the sour cream, who's making their own sour cream? If you do that, put it in the comments. I'll come buy some homemade sour cream and make a new plate. But until then, this is as homemade as it gets. So I'm about to taste this so we can hurry up and end the video. I got a Canelo fight to go watch. So let's uh, try and make things quick. All right, so right here, I'm gonna get a little spoon of our homemade guac, put it on this chip, get a little sour cream, Mexican cream, put that on there, and a little bit of cabbage. Now look, everything on this chip is homemade. Homemade refried beans. Um, I made them kind of like the can style y'all saw in the video, but I prefer that texture for nachos versus just like a mashed refried bean, so cheers. I love it. Like we said in the video, man, I hate when a nacho doesn't have enough of the toppings. You get nachos and you grab the chip and there's nothing on the chip. It got no love from the chef. We made sure we put toppings on each and every individual nacho. Each one has given the same. Oh, the serrano and the guacamole just hit me. It's another one of those dishes that develops on the tongue as you eat it, as you chew, as you talk. It's a great dish. I really love it. I hope y'all love it too. Let me know if you try this one. Join the Facebook group. That thing is going to be down in the description. Link there. And All right, you guys. So if you stuck around till this point in the video, before we do any of the announcements, I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. You guys mean the world to me. You know, it's one thing to get a quick view from a catchy title or a good thumbnail, but you know, that's a fickle audience and most of those guys will click off within 30 seconds of the video. So if you make it to this point, I just want to say thank you very much. You're a real fan to me and um, it truthfully means a lot. <clears throat> now, why did this video take so long? What was I waiting on? What are these big announcements? So the first one and the most important one, what I was waiting on is 
boom. So I'm gonna put the design up here. And just to give you all a little background information, this is a shirt design that I've been wanting to do for probably a year now, and I've just been waiting and waiting. Um, yeah, you know, I actually came up with this idea on the water. I might put the video right up here for y'all to watch real quick. I was thinking of a good t-shirt idea. I don't know why I randomly thought of it. It's like a mullet, but he's a mariachi. Yeah. He's got a, a hat and he's got like your fishing line and he's playing it on a guitar. It's the mariachi mullet shirt. But basically the idea is it's the mullet mariachi shirt. Now I'm dropping it with, um, I guess my uh, Hispanic Heritage Month drop, Mexican Independence Day drop. I don't know. I'm just wanted to do like small drops of merchandise. Maybe only 20 shirts are gonna be sold. So uh, before we go any further, if you would like a shirt, my business email is gonna be down in the description. I'm only going to be making 20 of these shirts. One is for me, one is for my pops. So that leaves 18 up for grabs. If you would like to request one, send me an email. Let me know what color you want, what size you want, and then um, I'll correspond with you, figure out payment information, and you know whether I'm shipping it to you or we can meet up and I can give it to you. Um, but yeah, I don't want to do a ton of crazy shirts. I don't want to kid myself. I'm a very small channel. We just hit 2,000 subs, so uh, you know I don't want to make a million shirts here and have a bunch left over. Uh, but I thought it was a cool shirt. I'm really just making it for me. And uh, if you would like one, let me know. And let me know quick because if people do want them, they're gonna go quick. Now, our second and final announcement is that I have recently launched a Patreon page. So I've been having an internal conflict on like, do I wanna do a Patreon? I really feel like I don't have much to offer. Like my dad's Patreon, he does his fishing reports. And that's kind of his thing. I don't really have anything like that. You know, if I did a fishing report, it would be the same as his. But then it dawned on me. We have so much behind the scenes content that just can't be on YouTube because of our brand and trying to be family friendly, no cursing, no monetized music, or they'll give you no ads and stuff like that. Um, and I thought to myself, you know what, that's, Patreon's a perfect place to post behind the scenes content like that of just me, my pops, my family, all of us being ourselves and not really having to watch and be careful of what we say, listening to music and just having fun, enjoying alcohol. Now I will say, if you do or are interested in something like that, I'm just gonna put it out there. It's gonna be uh, not kid-friendly content. We're gonna be cursing. We're gonna be drinking alcohol. It's just who we are. My dad's a retired Marine. I grew up around a bunch of those guys and I don't know, I guess it kind of <laughs> it became a part of me. So uh, yeah, that's the announcements. If you guys wanna check out the Patreon or wanna order a shirt, again, the email will be down in the description and my Patreon link will be down there as well. Big, big, big thank you if you've listened to my whole spiel and you're still sticking around. Even if you don't go support on Patreon, I don't care. You guys mean the world to me. You're the reason I keep posting these videos. I mean, truthfully, without y'all, I'm just some weirdo with a camera talking to myself. So, big thanks, man. Big thanks. And uh, you guys have a great rest of y'all's day. Peace.